Paul is <laughs> number six. You know, I was kind of looking through some of these Old Testament books in the Bible, and um, it was such that I was just kind of reading, and then it says here in number six, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel. <laughs> Say unto them, When either man or woman shall separate themselves to vow a vow of a Nazarite to separate themselves unto the Lord, <clears throat> he shall separate himself from wine and strong drink, and shall drink no vinegar or wine, <clears throat> or vinegar of strong drink, neither shall he drink any liqueur of grapes, nor eat moist grapes or dried. <laughs> All the days of his separation shall he eat nothing that is made of the vine tree from the kernels even to the husk. All the days of the vow of his separation there shall no razor come upon his head until the days be fulfilled in which he separateth himself unto the Lord he shall be holy and shall let the locks of of, of the hair of his head grow. All the days that he separateth himself unto the Lord, he shall come at no dead body. He shall not make himself unclean for his father, or for his mother, for his brother, or for his sister. When they die, because the consecration of his God is upon his head, all the days of his separation he is holy unto the Lord. You know, I read this Nazarite vow, uh, when I was very young, before I was married, I was uh, I was living in a house with a woman, a good Christian woman, yeah, and um, she was taking care of the elderly, and it was in Linwood, Washington. It was in Bothell. I decided that I needed to do a Nazarite vow as a as a man that wanted to be holy. <laughs> I shaved off all the hair on my head. <coughs> and it was something uh, it was something very interesting to me because in the Old Testament they have these that would consecrate themselves unto the Lord. Yeah. They would not make themselves unclean. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They wouldn't touch any dead body. They would not drink any vinegar or wine. They wouldn't eat any grapes or raisins. <coughs> They would make sacrifices unto God and in their zeal for holiness. Yes. Seeing that they had to experience this Nazarite vow. Mm -hmm. This is the law of the Nazarite who hath vowed <laughs> and of his offering unto the Lord for his separation. <laughs> Verse 21. <laughs> Besides that he, his hand shall get according to the vow which he vowed. So he must do after the law of his separation. Yes. Yeah. Now, when I did this, I must have been in my, oh, early 20s. It was kind of an odd experience. I thought, well, God, if I'm going to be holy, I might as well <laughs> use some of the Old Testament ways of doing it. <coughs> and uh, I had read here in the book of Acts, yes, mm -hmm, 40 days speaking things pertaining to the kingdom of God. <laughs> There was an individual yes, named Saul, and uh, he was really after him in the early church. He was persecuting them. I think he did one of these Nazarite vows where he shaved all his head off, his, his hair off. Yeah. Well, my experience was that the Old Testament uh, vows, yes, some of them were fulfilled in the New Testament because I went to a special house meeting where something, yeah, disliked me mm -hmm, uh, consecrating myself unto God. Oops. <laughs> now, um, here it is in, in uh, let's see, chapter 9 of the book of Acts. Yes. And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest. Now, there are a lot of those that hate Christians and desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogues, where that if he found any of this way, any of this way, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. whether they are men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. 
And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined around about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth, and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. Mm -hmm. And the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. Mm -hmm. Saul arose from the earth, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no man. Mm -hmm. And they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And he was there, he was there three, he was three days without sight. He was blinded and neither did eat nor drink. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias. Yes. And he said, behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, arise and go into the street, which is called straight. And inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus, for behold, he prayeth, yeah. and hath seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hands on him, <laughs> that he might receive his sight. Then Ananias answered the Lord, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he hath done by thy saints in Jerusalem. And there he hath authority from the chief priests to bind all that call on thy name. <laughs> but the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me, to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. <laughs> Now, that's really a nice thing for God to say to Saul. I'm going to show him all the things that he has to suffer yes, for my name's sake. Mm -hmm. Now, yesterday, I was suffering while laying in bed sleeping. <laughs> and I'm not one of these that are big on suffering for God's sake. Yes. In fact, God has never really told me you're going to suffer all these things. I do know about the other saints that have. <laughs> Yes. <laughs>